for this week's prep and data, we are launching our new airline, Prep Air. Did you get it? Prepare? It took me a while to get it too. Anyway, um, we have four inputs for the challenge this week. So maybe it takes you a little while to sort of explore each of the different inputs to really get to grips with how to go about completing the requirements. I know it definitely did for me. So the thing that I found most important to keep in mind was the level of aggregation in each of the um, inputs. So for ticket sales and sales targets, they're both at the daily level. So we'll probably want to join them together and then aggregate them at the same time rather than having to aggregate them both before doing the join. It's just slightly less work. Um, our 2020 proje projections, they're all at the quarterly level and then our airports are, you know, they don't have a date associated with them. They're just more of a lookup table. So let's go ahead and start off with our ticket sales and our sales targets. We're just renaming a couple of fields initially. So changing that value field to be sales in the sales data set, changing the value field to be target in the target data set. I know it doesn't quite match with the output, but for me, it just helps to put it in language that I definitely will understand you know, going forwards, wherever's value can be a bit vague to me personally, personal preference for everyone. So we're just going to join those two data sets together on origin, date and destination so that we have the same number of rows coming in and going out uh, because this is just basically adding on the target field to our ticket sales data set. That's the only additional field that we actually need because date, origin and destination are just going to be repeats. So yeah, we only need to add on that extra field. We don't want to change the number of rows. We just want our target associated with our sales for each day. So we change our date to be at the quarterly level by using the three dots more options menu. If I just zoom in there, then you just convert our dates to be the quarter number just so that we have that value in there so that when we're aggregating, we can group on that quarter number as you can see, and sum up our sales and our target, as well as obviously grouping on the origin destination so that we have our sales and target aggregated for each route for each quarter. There just so happens to only be one quarter at the moment in our data set. And that's where we come to sort of now think about our 2020 projections data set. So this one's a bit of a funny one. We've got each country, which is the destination country. That's what we're focusing on. That's what we will, how we will join it back to our data set up here, even though currently we don't have um, the country in that data set, but we'll come to that. So what we have is the percentage change for each quarter from the first quarter. So in order to change this in from plain English into sort of a numeric value that we can multiply by, then we're just going to get everything down into one column here so that we have a column detailing the percentage change, uh, like the heading kind of thing, if you like. And then we will also have our um, percentage change in another field. We'll use a little bit of if logic, if statement logic to just say, hey, if it's starting with a min for minus, then just replace that minus with a dash with a minus sign. Otherwise, if then we want to be replacing the plus with nothing at all. So we do that, make sure that we change it to be a number. We make sure we change it to be a number decimal specifically because now next we're going to divide it by 100. And if you try and divide a whole number by 100, then it's not going to be very happy. Um, Tableau Prep's not going to like that very much, so make sure you make it a decimal. Just one of the ways you could be tripped up there, I guess. Um, and then we just want to know basically from this field here, what quarter the change is associated with. So what quarter are we forecasting or projecting, whatever you want to call that. Um, so I've used some regex to extract it. Another way you could do it that I've just thought about is maybe you can do an automatic split um, and that actually brings you back the quarters. So you can use regex, you can use um, the inbuilt prep functionality. That's probably actually easier. Um, but a couple of different ways to get that quarter information out for us. So now when it comes to joining on on the country, we first need to get um, with our sales data um, for Q1, the country associated with our origin and destination airports. So 
this just means we have to do two separate joins. First of all, we join the airport code to the origin. Next, we're joining the destination to the airport code. And we're just doing some renaming at those steps as well. So we're just making sure we rename the country that's coming from the airports to be origin country and destination country. So it's nice and clear and no one's confused. Then we can join our country, our destination country to our country from our forecasted projections and do our calculations here to just basically say let's um, get our projected sales by doing one plus the percentage change times by the sales do the same thing for the target as well an important step that I didn't do the first time I was doing this challenge and then kind of get rid of the sales and target from the initial data set so that we can union it back to just after we had the information about the countries being brought through so that now we have 24 rows six rows for each quarter which is definitely important and something that i had i'd managed to get some duplication issues before uh, when i was initially doing this challenge so just make sure you've got 24 rows there otherwise you'll struggle to match the values that we get to um, at the end of the challenge so then we're just going to sum this up to the year level so grouping and summing on everything except for the quarter there and then we're just going to calculate that variance field which is just sales minus the target and we're just rounding that to two decimal places as well and so there you have it a fun quirky challenge that was quite straightforward in the end but maybe there are a few twists and turns where you might not have known where exactly to turn to next. So hopefully that was a useful walkthrough for you and thank you very much for watching.